Jesus gives you in the text. He says, whoever wants to save their life will lose it. Whatever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. In other words, he says, if, if you understand this concept of how I suffered and how you are then also to suffer, you will actually gain a higher engagement with life. You will actually have your life. You will become somebody of, of value and importance in the world. And if you don't, you may think you're grasping at a, a more fulfilling life, but you will actually lose your life in the process. In other words, he says, this kind of life, this willingness to suffer is a more fulfilling life than its opposite. Now, there are numerous ways that I could show you this. I watched about 12 hours worth of videos, read articles, and blogs about how this could play out, but I've distilled it down into four thoughts for you for today so that you don't have to stay the rest of the afternoon. Here are four ways this works. If you understand this concept, you will be able to suffer more realistically, more purposefully, more humanly, and finally, you'll be able to suffer well in contrast to the way the world suffers. So let's, let's walk through these. First of all, you'll suffer realistically. Um, I want to read you a portion of a review of the Google Pixel 3, which is a smartphone that came out in 2018. This is the reviewer talking. He says, The world is on fire, but the new Google Pixel 3 in my pocket is cool to the touch. A dark slab of metal and glass, it comes alive when I rub my finger across the back of it, and then we're doomed. A colleague texts me on Signal. A push alert from a well-regarded news site has more details about the alleged murder of a Saudi journalist. On next door, several neighbors are reporting that their drinking water has tested positive for unsafe levels of pesticides. Facebook is hacked, and our information is out there. Everyone on Twitter is angry, you idiot, you tender-triggered snowflake. Everyone on Instagram is posturing, posing, and you are less beautiful than they. They're going to places that you're not going, and you should feel bad because you are worse in every way. The world is dying. Come see it. Come see it. Oh, but that camera and that screen, the lens feature that can tell me what I'm looking at, what kind of plant it is or what kind of animal it is or whatever information is captured in a business card so that I don't have to go to the library, I don't have to enter in it, enter it in, excuse me, or even remember it at all. I don't have to remember? Okay, Google, I don't want to think about it. Okay? Okay? So the world out there is doing everything it can to ignore suffering. It's saying, if I can just have a moment where I can just scroll my phone and forget about the world, or I can binge five episodes of this show and forget about the world, or I can drink this or smoke this or do this so that I don't have to think about the world, that's what the world wants to do. But Christians are different because they're realistic. They realize that that suffering actually happens, that it's real, and that it needs to be dealt with. But unlike some other systems, for example, Hinduism, which says you should just detach from it, or, or atheism, which says we just need to put into place some policies that will actually fix these problems, Christianity says, no, suffering is always going to be with us. We have to learn how to deal with it. And so this made me think, it's interesting that if you go back a couple hundred years and you look at some of the evangelism material that Christians were producing, how they brought people into the faith, their argument would go like this. They would say, look at all the evil and suffering in the world. Doesn't that make you think we need a God? But now fast forward to 2021. And who's using that exact same line of argument? Atheists. They're saying, look at all the pain and suffering in the world. That must mean there's not a God. You see what didn't change? The pain and the suffering. Everybody knows it. The thing that Christians, I think, have given up, unfortunately, is that they have the answer to it. We've sold people this version of Christianity where everyone's happy and everyone's dressed well and everyone is okay with everything. Instead of being a place where we might as well have a sign that says, if you're worried about suffering and dying, we're the people for you. Because we can suffer realistically. Realistically. 